I have been uh, uh, with the two books here. First, uh, this body language and homeopathy. It is a 800 pages book containing 570 images. And this book is published by Vision Publishers and the price is 1,100 rupees. The other book which recently I published was Absolute Homeopathic Mother America. It is a book of 1,250 pages containing 150 remedies. Each remedy has been scanned from Hanuman onwards up to 2013. Whatever the of my life, because I have been working over this since 1980. You must look into these uh, two books and I hope that these two books will be of great help to you in your homeopathic practice. Thank you all. Words by the language and the words that they express, all those things considering and then coming to the conclusion and selecting the rubric is the art of education. And Dr. Yogesh Shigalji has done wonderful documentation also. I don't think anything more uh, better than better evidence than this to learn many things in this aspect of prescribing the remedy. Thank you very much, sir. And if I come to the second speaker, Dr. Ajit Kulkarneji, I have his both books. I was very much impressed by the body language, by home homeopathy, by body language. And in one of these seminars when I went in, uh, somewhere in North India, I purchased that book. And really it expresses a lot of information. By just seeing the body language, the volumes of the information will be understood. By reading, uh, uh, by words, expression is something different. But seeing the body language is something unique. Why? Because cross body, subtle body and the uh, subtlest body. The body is consists of all three levels. So, subtler than this soul is a pure consciousness. The consciousness is the, is, the, is, is the background but upon which all these aspects are being working on and the expression has to come through the body. That is the final. So, sir, what has, he has been taken up the method of body language, definitely right. It cannot be separated from the mind also. This is the expression, that is how you are studying through the body language. So, both are same, both are correct. I agree with you, sir. Thank you very much. Wonderful presentation. Prepare out of this 
organism. Can you see? It's okay, can you see this? This is C Q four one number one. You have to write. Okay. There's a one more Q four only one more two slide two. Name the remedy prepared from Ulslam. This is for Q four one and two. Please write the answer one and two. Actually, what you have written is directly written the answers without writing one and two. Okay, we are not going to consider. Q four has got two questions. One is a picture, which is the source and the name of the remedy. Okay, and this name the remedy prepared from the Ulslam. This was the Q four. There is one more Q five now. Q five. Next slide. Q five. Yes, please read this. The fact is, we need any and every way of finding the right remedy. The simple simile and the simple symptomatic simile mom. The farthest reach of all the pathological simile mom. And I maintain that we are still well with the lines of homeopathy. That is expansive, progressive science fostered and science fostered. This is very much related to yesterday's sessions and today's sessions. Please notice this is from Q5 first question. Please write the answer. You have to uh, write the name of the doctor or the scientist who said this. Okay, this is important. Okay, is it okay with you? Next, next. This is from Q5. You know the other. Okay. What is the term used for relationship of remedies in homeopathy? You have to write down the term. What is the term used for relationship of remedies in homeopathy? This is for Q5 second question. Okay. This is all for Q4 and Q5. Are you okay? Yes. And please return your answer sheets to the volunteers. Those who are standing here by you. Okay. Thank you so much. we break for lunch i would like to remind you uh, that uh, post conference master or dr rajan shankaran seminar is there so interested delegates can register themselves in the reception counter so it's meal time now so please come back to the hall by 2 o'clock thank you
identified Mr. Robert Hans, MD and PhD from Sweden. Robert has and was born full time clinical anesthetist between 1979 and 1993, and then he turned into, into academics. He served as a professor of anesthesia and intensive care at Karolinska Institute of in Stockholm. He, he has supervised 20 PhD programs and authored more than 300 scientific papers. He has written two books about fluid therapy. Has interest in evidence of homeopathy stems from his negative experience of skeptics movement, which he, with, which he claims are misuse in scientific evidence to support their ideological agenda. I welcome you, sir. Thank you so much for this nice introduction. Um, very happy to be here. I've been around the world quite a bit, but I've never been to India, so, uh, so this is uh, my lovely first acquaintance with your beautiful country. Uh, as you heard, I come from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. It looks like this. Uh, if you would want to visit, please come in the summer, because in the winter it's really awful. So summertime is the best, uh, best period of the year to be here. Well, who is Robert Hahn? Who am I? I had never actually worked with homeopathy myself. Never done that. I'm an, a, a doctor and a, a clinical anesthesiologist. Although I have turned to science in later years, which I think that is interesting. But I still come across um, homeopathy from uh, a specific angle, and that is uh, the angle of um, of the skeptics movement, and it all started in 2011. We have a political week in my country where politicians meet the public, and when there are public debates and so on, very much is uh, on television. And um, this summer, 2011, this man here on, on uh, the TV, he's an astronaut. Yeah. A Swede who has become an astronaut part of the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, space program. And he appeared on television just to show that homeopathy was bluff. Uh, he told us that it was nothing more than water. There was no science telling, no studies saying that this was uh, effective. And he kind of remained on, on that position. He was going to prove it by participating in, a, uh, in an experiment. And okay, okay there's uh, some debate whether this experiment was successful or not. But in any event, it started my thoughts about this because I wondered, how does he know this? This is no scientist. He doesn't have any academic training or reviewing scientific papers at all. But he stands up with all his uh, um, public uh, image and tells us that this is bluff. I was thinking about this and I said, he must have been told this. And it was clearly the skeptics movement that, that had sort of put into his head that this is bluff. Um, so how could people do this? How could people do this? Well, they believe in the scientists. And they, as the skeptics, they present themselves as scientists, although they usually are not. They're usually school teachers, computer technicians, and things like that. They're on the edge of science, but not real scientists themselves. Has Anders Fuglsen ever read a, a paper or such a PubMed to see whether a publication about uh, homeopathy or not? Very likely he has not done that. So I did it myself and I could easily see that there is not very difficult to find articles that tell us that homeopathy is, uh, is more than water. Uh, so I produced a blog, I wrote a blog, actually it was a series of three articles that are published on the net uh, in 2011, late 2011, it caught enormous attention. Uh, people wrote to me several hundred emails and so on, I spent some time really to argue back and forth and I read more. Uh, people urged me to write a paper uh, which uh, summarized the uh, impressions from this blog and so eventually I did in 2013 this, uh, this article came, came on. And the first thing I thought about was uh, when do we regard a scientific method to be valid? When is it valid? 
in the traditional opinion is that it's a sign when it's scientific. And that means that it must work, uh, the method must work, and it must also have a shown mechanism. But it must be scientifically plausible that this method works. And the second point here is a problem for homeopathy. But since the late, or we we'll say the mid 1990s, a new approach has appeared on the scene. We now talk about what is evidence based or not. And evidence based medicine is what rules hospital care, at least in Scandinavia. And I also think it's uh, like that in the Western world. Uh, we only ask, does it work or doesn't it? And we don't care about the mechanism. Because it then it gets too complicated. And we were put, two tools were put in the hands of, of us to uh, evaluate whether a method works or not. And the first one is a meta-analysis. And the second one uh, is um, a systematic review. So I looked, are there any meta-analysis of homeopathy versus water? Because that was the basic question. Is it better than water? Yeah, it wasn't difficult to find. This was the uh, actually in the very early days of the uh, evidence-based medicine. This article was published in the Lancet by Linda. He had put together 186 clinical trials, which is a really a high number if you compare to other questions that he raised in medicine. This is a very large number, uh, and it, he. He uh, read all these ones and found that 89 of them will be sufficient to, to, uh, uh, to uh, be included in the meta-analysis. Uh, and he found the odds ratio 2.45, which means that it's 2.45 times more likely that homeopathic treatment will be effective compared to water. And he also presented a confidence interval, as we call CI here, um, 2.05 to 2.93. This means that if one, the, the, um, um, if, if one is included in this interval, it is not statistically significant. But if one is not within this interval, it is, um, we could say, scientific, uh, statistically uh, proven that is better than placebo. Okay, there's some corrections here for quality of studies and so on, but still it remained it was statistically significant better than placebo. Okay, this of course caused a lot of attention from the skeptics movement and from scientists who didn't believe in this. So it's deeply rooted in the European countries at least the homeopathy does not work. Uh, and what was put attention on first was uh, that there were different quality of these studies that Linda had included in his original analysis. And one can uh, evaluate the, the quality of a study uh, according to something called the data score. It goes from zero to five, which is, of which uh, five is the best one, so the best studies. And uh, if we, he took a look at the studies in, in the in meta-analysis that looked like this. And you can see a trend here that if you go from zero to four, uh, at least, uh, it seems to be lower figures um, as, as we move along. Uh, each individual Jadal score was uh, showed still a statistically significant uh, better effect of uh, uh, homeopathy versus placebo, but it's getting weaker, you see that. But it's getting a little better at them. Now, if we would plot this, uh, it was done later on a scale. You can see your data score here. The better, uh, the higher the quality of the study, the higher you more to the right you go, and the odds ratio on the uh, y-axis. And right in the middle here uh, means that this is um, uh, the same effect of placebo and homeopathy. But all data there are there are about this red line uh, shows that. Um, Homeopathy is superior to placebo, and those who are below this uh, shows that water is better. Of course, you see the majority of the data are above the line, but still there's a trend to that it decreases as you go up at least from, from one to four. Then at five, it gets better again, which is uh, important. However, if this would be or handled by a, a uh, scientific skeptic, uh, namely Ilse Ernst, he published this slide of the same data, 
uh, of course, Uriel did looks like this, but he took the mean value from each Yada score and he connected uh, the uh, scores from one to four and said that uh, as studies get better, they will not show that homeopathy is superior to placebo. That was his opinion. Although it is regarded that they were getting better when we had the Yadav score of five. So if I will connect the lines like this, which you shouldn't do, you, you shouldn't um, do a, take the mean values like he did. That's unscientific in my mind. You, you should base this on all the data to include the variability at, at each point. It would rather be an exponential curve, uh, according to my opinion, we should end at about two. But then the event, this was an argument against home homeopathy. Um, and Ilse Dernst, uh, who is a well-known person who uh, go goes through the scientific literature of complementary medicine, uh, wrote a systematic review of uh, uh, these, this and other papers and concluded that there was uh, no strong evidence. Uh, and he included his own studies as well as, uh, as others and he interpreted them in, uh, in uh, sort of very uh, special way. Also some studies here that from Linda that I, I haven't spoken about. But he uh, concluded that there's no sound evidence for homeopathy. And one may wonder what is sound, what is sound here? Is there evidence or is there not? Uh, I would say that the, the, the word is, is a bit uh, it's a bit strange. He performed a uh, systematic review. Uh, I won't go that into detail, but I think on very many points here, he, no matter what happens, or no matter what data, he concludes that homeopathy is not effective. So I would say this is a very biased uh, scientist, and you, you shouldn't really, um, you shouldn't really consider what he's saying uh, very, very much. Okay, now we come to Kucharat. He reviewed a study by a, a man called Kucharat, and he said that uh, he concluded that uh, strength of evidence was estimated to be low by the authors. What's this low evidence? We're going to take a look at that study to uh, find out whether estimate uh, if the uh, evidence was low or not. The actual paper looked, looked like this, came out in 2000. And this group based their conclusions on about the same data as Linda had done a, a couple of years before. Uh, and they found 118 randomized controlled trials, which means that um, the patient and uh, the, the um, therapist didn't know if it was water or a homeopathy that was provided to the patient. But then he excluded everything but 17 trials. So he took away most everything that was there. And then he, well, for the reasons that, that you can see here, uh, some of them understandable, most not very understandable. He didn't uh, include studies validating biological effects, for instance, which I, I, I don't sympathize with. Uh, but then, he, you, he, he didn't treat the data like you should do in a meta-analysis. He, he summarized p-values in a, a bit strange way, in a way that was unfavorable to homeopathy. But he still, if we had his 17 studies, he would have a result showing that homeopathy was favorable by this figure, which uh, says that it's um, the risk of uh, that uh, the difference between homeopathy and placebo is explained by chance is 3.6 out of 1 million. Of course, that's very low. No, he wasn't happy with that. Now he started a, a next sequential exclusion based on quality, what he called quality, and it was mostly based on a patient's loss of follow-up. And then he uh, stopped when he got the p-value had decreased to 0 0.084. Um, no, 0 0.082. And those of you who are into uh, science know that this is a non-significant result. 0 0.082 means that the risk is uh, 8.2 out of 100. That the difference between placebo and, and homeopathy is explained by its chance. So this final result is based on only five studies. 
I have studies out of the more than 100 that I started with. Uh, what is told me is that uh, the behavior of the Kukrat study is uh, not scientific in my mind. A, a scientist should start uh, his work with defining what he wants to do, what study is going to be included, uh, what exclusion criteria is going to have. Now he changed his mind the whole time because he did, the data in favor of homeopathy was so strong he continued until it, it, it had lost its effect. So I think that's a biased, um, uh, biased uh, way of working. And uh, you can always do that. If you have any material and you remove most of it, more than 90%, you will find that your p-value is being lost. There's nothing strange with that. We call that a type 2 error in science. What was bad was he didn't de define his endpoints from the start. What we can learn from this, when the meta-analysis, the authors can really play around with the result until they get the result they want. And you should be cautious about this. Um, and why so? I think they don't dare to publish positive uh, data in fa for uh, homeopathy. I think there's a fear here of being outcasted from the academic community. And of course, the easiest way to prove that something is not that something is not effective is to remove as much as possible. And what was done here was to remove more than 90% of the data. Now I come to the last uh, study of this series that I want to point out. This uh, uh, called this study that uh, killed homeopathy. It's published in 2005 by Shang and co-workers. Uh, and they did basically the same thing, although they came to the opposite result as uh, Linda did. And I will see the, the uh, technique they used to arrive at this result. Um, he started out with the uh, same amount of studies, uh, and some more, of course, as more data had been rolling in. He excluded some studies, crossover studies, I don't understand that, because that's a very strong scientific layout. But the final number was 110, 110 studies. And we are not told what was the odds ratio for those 110, but apparently it was all very much favorable for homeopathy. That was the, probably why they didn't publish that. But now he did the same thing as Cooper. He began exclusion. Exclusion based on quality. He didn't tell us what quality measures he used at all. And we don't get um, p-values along the way. Uh, he ended with 21 studies. We don't get a p value for that. Apparently, it was scientifically uh, positive for homeopathy, but no, he started exclusion based on size, which is uh, a little strange to me. But uh, his final number was eight studies. So, from 165, he only evaluated eight studies, and of that, concluded that homeopathy was. In effect, it was actually the data was still in favor of homeopathy, but it didn't reach uh, statistical significance. Here they turned the, P, the uh, odds ratios upside down, so this should be 1.13 1, 1. if you use the, the uh, previous uh, way of handling the data. <coughs> if you have very few studies like this and you have different diagnoses, there's a risk of something called flip-flop phenomenon because it depend the final result depends very much on which studies you include. If you include nine, it could be a different result from when you have seven and it could go back and forth depending on how you put the data together. Uh, and without really telling us which studies were included along the way, uh, this opens a way for scientists to do whatever they want with, uh, with the, the data. Here's another point that he uh, used to uh, prove that, that uh, homeopathy is ineffective. It's called the funnel plot. It's a way of comparing the odds ratio for data with the standard error, which is uh, on the y-axis there. And the standard error is always lower for large studies and is higher for small ones. So when we, we go to lower values, higher up on the y-axis, we have larger studies. And, and as you can see, if studies are, are small, there will be a more positive um, for homeopathy. And um, if we go to the 
right side of the, of the, the uh, one here on the x-axis will find that results are negative for homeopathy, but they are positive on, on, the, on the left side. Okay, he, he said that if we extrapolate to large studies, we have an odds ratio of one, so it's, uh, homeopathy is equal to water. The, the bad thing with making this plot is you cannot do this with mixed uh, diagnosis because studies where you expect a very minor effect are always powered higher. They include more patients than studies where you expect a strong effect. And, and that is, uh, yeah, that's for ethical reasons. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, if we take and conclude the, uh, uh, my experiences with this type of uh, meta-analysis is, 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 is that scientists try to play around with data as much, uh, they pretty pretty much uh, creating the result they want, and they must exclude definitely more than 90% of the material to, to show that homeopathy is ineffective. And why it becomes ineffective when you do like this is because we create the type 2 errors and flip-flop phenomena. So, um, uh, be careful when you read the literature here and be careful for sequential removal and, uh, and um, situations where scientists have not really clearly defined from the beginning what they're going to do because from what they uh, have said that they will want to do, they should present us as the main result. Thank you, Mr. Robert. That's the reason I'm batting in between. Uh, you all know KQHD is doing a fantastic job. You're all witnessing a super duper international conference happening. If you're not yet being a KQHD member so far, don't you feel so you should become one? If you feel so and if you want to become a KQHD member, you can be a life member just for 5,000 rupees. So for further details and to become a member, you can contact Dr. Deepa Rajay, Deepa Amar, at the registration counter. And I have one more important announcement, especially for all the delegates. Uh, there is a kit which will be given to you along with the souvenir. It will be opposite the registration counter. It will be post 5 o'clock. You can collect the kit and the souvenir later. Thank you very much. Thank you. He is scholar in Veda, Upanishad and Yoga. He accepts all schools of homeopathy if it is in Hanumanian way. And Kenyan homeopath, he mixed with all schools of homeopaths. Professor Pini Patel, Patron, Karanga Qualified Homeopathic Doctors Association, Chairman of Organizing Committee, former Principal of Government Homeopathic Medical College, Bangalore, and Chandigarh, former Dean and Director of BHMC Salem, Tamil Nadu. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. With the permission of the chair, can I straight away start the case? Sir, my time is 30 minutes from now. Okay? Please, sir. Please listen to this sound. Sound. Can you off this light? You can just see that 
this is this doesn't work sir okay you can see that it's weakness pharyngeal weakness and vocal cords can you show that vocal cords perishes vocal cords perishes you are seeing able to see the diagnosis from the MSCAT hospital soft palate paralysis deviation of the tongue vocal cord palsy and he was treated with the columbia asia hospital for 6 to 8 months and nothing came out
frequent urination in laundry or standing. Laughs loudly in sleep, dreams of disease being cured. Wife expired recently because of a great shock. Very emotional, keeps things to himself. Fastidious about his office work. Before this, all this was not possible. After giving the medicine, this is the chain. At that time, we got an idea why don't we take the video. I think Dr. Ragi was there with me. I hope you find. Miasmatic diagnosis, dominating syphilis with psoriatic plant. How shall we proceed? Try various medicines, taking various approaches and symptoms. No much change. Lastly, this. Again, we came down to Boston. We prescribed trembling, slightly reduced placebo we gave. No tremors on lying down, which was present earlier. Speech improved, tone louder, placebo. Much better in between, he walked down to the drawing room and sat on the sofa. Earlier, the prognosis made by the doctors was that he would not survive for more than 15 days. He, how is trembling of the legs and vertigo? Now he has no vertigo. Involved in trembling of urine, when is, is, it, is it when he coughs? No. Food intake was as considerably improved. How long he can stand? Few seconds with support. Earlier, no sensation when he for, uh, earlier, no sensation when he passed out. He doesn't know he has fallen down. Straighten your legs, yes. Straighten your hands, yes. He did that, you have seen. This was not possible when he started the treatment. When he falls down with vertigo or after standing, he doesn't know what we are talking and takes five minutes to come back to senses and understanding what is going on. Uh, you can see it, yourself. You can see his face, his features.
You can see how he was earlier. He is able to walk. You have seen him falling down earlier. Now he is able to come, sit there. We can understand the local language he is explaining. How is the balance when he walks? It's much better. Come on, fold your, come on, fold your legs, sit up, yes, he is able to sit. This was not possible earlier. Now, does he walk? Yes, he walks with support. He sits for one and a half an hour, which was not possible. When we started the treatment, he was able to sit only for five minutes. He eats him by himself now. In such cases, spiration is the only possibility but the life expectancy and quality of life has been enhanced. He lived for more than two years under our care. And that was the case. And conclusion, the prescription was based on what is curative in medicine, in disease. This is a case with advanced pathology and they came to us as a last resort. As I told you in the beginning, where to us nobody comes to directly. After all Patis, Tirupati. After Tirupati, Homeopathy. After Homeopathy, Patanpati. So this is what we could do. Now this is the reproduction chart. You can just see that. And we have to start. Have patience to listen to this. Patience. Have patience to listen to this. So.
testing your patience how long you can bear it. Believe me, this video is 15 minutes I have taken with my own camera and he was crying for 15 minutes. My event management fellow says, sir, you put like this, everybody will go get out of the hall. So cut it short. Yes, cut it short for three to four minutes. Now, let's now see. Mother brought it to us on recommendation of some relative to get rid of asthma. Expectation yellowish, very restless, angry and stubborn, nothing pleases him. Very troublesome child, always crying and that used to trigger the asthma attacks sometime. Frequent admissions to hospitals to control severe attacks of asthma. Maybe every month or even less than that. If, if he starts crying, he can go up to a half an hour, mother's version. Loves ice creams, chocolates which father gives very often in spite of mother's objection. Repeated urine infection. Already using medicines from some other homeopathic doctor, so and so. <coughs> Grandmother had asthma. Father, ganja addict, smokes daily 15 cigarettes. Mother teacher and takes care of the entire family. She beats the child many times a day. Mother was frustrated with the entire family and the child. Asthma wheezing, aggravation, especially midnight, and the boy gets up and cries as usual, which again increases the wheezing. Straight away, we gave two well from Karen with asking on 34. Within one week, there was a there has been a lot of change in behavior. Now he calms down in short time. Asthma is much less. No problem. Mother is very much happy. Father now says. When he has attack of asthma, he lies down on the stomach, flexing his knees, knee chest position.
If a patient comes with a, this gait, genuvelum deformity, works like this, that can be treated by homeopathic medicine, but cannot be managed by the medicine, that can be managed by the rehabilitation aids. After treatment, much improvement in a gait, the normal, a child of a two year, thumak thumak kar chalta bachman, bacha ek thumak thumak ki chalna, just walk like this, is it clear, is it true, is it normal, no, having some defect, which type of defect is a metabolic bone disorder, recaps, and after treatment, of uh, nine months, walking normal. This, the super specialization is a need of present days in all the fields, in all the faculties. Thank you. Deformities are genovarum, velgum, and lentisit. All you are doctors, all you are knowing. But how it happened? It's an imbalance between the formation of bone and resorption of the bone. A balance disturbance, disturbance is there. How can be managed by the medicines and this deformity by the rehabilitation aids? I want normally, please help me. Come on the topic. The patient of 15 months on 19th October 2011, unable to stand and walk. Patient comes to my clinic for the recurrent loose motions, congestion, all the complaints with the constricting fever. But as I'm a homeopathy healer, I observe the posture and the condition and the body figure. There is a saying something different. For saying the January bilateral knee, difficulty in walking, painful bilateral knee joint, broadening of the knee, unable to walk and stand. Lots of cervical glands present and a fall on walking. General indigestion, constipation and diarrhea, dullness, low appetite, emaciation, thirst normal and vegetarian. If I am doing an orthopedic, that's need the very first X-rays. What's the defect? After seeing this defect, there is a space between epiphysis and a metaphysis. This laser can not working. Epiphysis and a metaphysis, if there is a space and there is a decalcified zone, this decalcified zone, there is a something but not visualizing. And if there is a softness, the weight of the patient and the uh, walking, if, if he stand, if he walk, then the deformity will develop, the softening of the bone. After doing the x-rays, there is a lot of recordings there, the positive PPD test in the pathology and uh, uh, records finding in the radiological findings. Hemogram says 4,463 alkaline phosphate is, if alkaline phosphate is raised, even calcium and anion calcium normal or abnormal, but if bone deformity is there, alkaline phosphate is raised, that leads to case of a regress. As a dietitian, what should I prescribe? The diet chart, OHA, Anything which can absorb easily, that's the best by mother. Mother can do this. And uh, rehabilitation aids, the morbid discipline and observation. In the previous slide, we can say the prescribing of a tubercolanum 200 in a single dose with the management of a corrective above knee will be cast for a span of 20 to 30 days. Consecutively for the three months, this is the management part and exposure to sunlight, why? You all know sunlight is a better, helps to produce a vitamin D in a skin, avoid walking and nutritious diet. We always suggest parents to do the nutritious diet. And this is a flow chart of a particular at a stage, at the different stages, which are called the simple symptomatology as appears in a patient and told by the Thanks.
Bowel functions improve the second then prescribe the calcarea card, calcarea iodide, calcarea phos. Bowel functions normal, mild correction, deformity, calcarea iodide and calcarea phos continue. General lung deformity disappear, decreases by the help of a management and appetite normal, but there is a constipated stool the ball round line. Then advise a chelidonia. Bowel functions are the normal. All are going normal, but after a few days, patients suffering with a urine infection and a prescribed of Voxol, 30 and calcarea course. This is a span of 11 months. In this 11 month, what happened? After a 7 month, 6 to 7 month, the x-rays against them, and then there is a space between epiphysis and metaphysis decreases, improvement is there. And after a few months, improvement also sees in the alkaline phosphatase 286 from the 4600 and something. And a calcium increases after a few months also. It's a span, it's a case of, yes you can. After a few months, there is also a report where the alkaline phosphatase shows 279 and serum calcium level 9.7 and this is a child which was unable to walk and stand is still walking and doing work. This is a flow chart because the time is too short so I concentrated all the slides in a few slides. This is a hemoglobin 9.4, 11.7, 11.7 the different dates and ages of before 11 months and after 11 months up to 2015 there is an improvement, improvement and improvement if you have a case with the lots of records but there is a not deterioration is there that's that way I cure the patient. This is a comparative study from October 2011, April 7 and from the 19th October I will show a hand. This is the place where the epiphysis and metaphysis the first x-ray there is a destruction is there and the virus deformity, virus means bowel like this one. The virus deformity and here is the improvement after the two year, the final. This is a comparative study of master abhay. When protein present in a urine, only the marks of 30 advised and there is a result nil, nil and nil. How it develops? If there is a disease, if there is a complaint, how can and after sitting 5 months photograph, there is a not a broadening of the wrist joint, 10 months there is a not broadening but a slight broadening is there, 12 months broadening of the wrist joint, very first finding in a rickets and metabolic disorder, the broadening of the joints in a children. And a 15 months comes to my clinic, 20 months and a 26 months improvement is there. This is a flow chart, this is a flow photograph and improvement first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth and after 11 months of a treatment there is a broadening if you can see and this photograph shows normal. This shows in also in a radiological site. First one time. After four months Child was walking, some sort of an entrance, and he is walking with corrective shoes. The rehabilitation, the management, you must need the management for the correction. After a one and a half year, he is running from the my clinic, he is afraid about disclosing the clothes. And he is running outside, then he gave him, uh, I gave him the coffee and chocolate, then he walks properly normal. This is after taking the sweet pills and toffee. <laughs> Metabolic wound disorder with the corrective evolution in our deformities. As I said, I am doing a homeo healing that I show something new that is a deform. Orthopedic means bone and a limbs and the part. 
deformity first one is a genuvarum corrective second one genuvarum corrective genuvarum corrective and the genuvarum deformity is a very difficult to get as, as i show the first video the genuvarum deformity with the walking and that's the second one the lots of cases i have in particular this field this is a wind shift disease i did it in 2008 2010 this is first second third and fourth in the span of a uh, one and a half year the different cases different type different pattern of the deformities and that can be managed by the homeo ortho healing only the homeopathic medicine not given any calcium sachet vitamin d vitamin other sub supplement only the medicines homeopathic and biogenic and very first the one god surya suraj the kiran of surya there is the only one perfect medicine which we are lacking nowadays we are staying is staying indoor and our child is too cute don't go don't don't put in the sunlight become black it's a very difficult but you should expose the sunlight after doing my work of 18 years dr aziz qureshi the governor of up appreciates my work and gave me the prashasti patra in the field of homeo ortho healing this homeopathy make a base as i showed that previously it's a not a placebo i have a record we have a lots of a confidence we have lots of a evidence that's my guru dr narish shora shows me in a beginning in the 96 97 pankaj just keep a record dr grish gupta says in pankaj keep the record only the record will show will say you say anything nobody can Wow, Taj. Namaskar to all of you. And this is a short presentation in Hindi. I want to say something. घर से मस्जिद है बहुत दूर चलो यूँ कर लें किसी रोते हुए बच्चे को हंसाया जाए. छोटी सी मुस्कान मुझे देनी है किसी बच्चे को तो मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी. Our sweet pills have a sweet smile. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Pain and discoloration of 
rate index to D pulsar at right zone. Patient is a known diabetic for 14 years. There was a variation in blood sugar level. Patient was advised for amputation of two. As you know, whenever they approach 14 years to have diabetes, maybe it is not under control and this wound is not healing and either we have to save your life or your limb. Better it amputated this part. You may be safe, it was attacked, but you got from the surgeons. And someone suggested my name he came to hopes on homeopathy because he was an ardent and strong believer in homeopathy. See, as you know, see directly I am telling the name of the medicine. Though it is not specific, before that the study has been done seriously and sincerely as a constitutional medicine. Whatever the allopathic tablet you are taking, along with that, the sickle coil has been given and dressing has been done with calendula mother tincture. See, this is the toe you could able to make out. You can see the entire aspect of the dome. After one week starting this, where the earlier healing was there at the root of the dome, that I started reducing. You could able to see the given color. See, after 10 days, here, I would like to share with you, the patient was very strong and his willpower is so strong. Sir, whatever it happens, I will wait. You please give me the medicine. I don't like to undergo surgery. It was the word which was actually helping me. So, it was not confident in And another advantage is that I am working in a government institute as a professor. They will do freely food, government provides and medicine also. That's why I can wait for that. There is another advantage for me, otherwise patients come away. And thanks to the government providing all the facilities. Now you could be able to see the, even the color of the. Can you see the changes? Slowly it started separating from its tissue without swelling, without any pain, and without any discomfort. Can you see? For the natural separation can take place. You have become silent now. Because who came out with this one? Natural amputation has taken place and ulcer killed completely. See, it was the ulcer and the sore. You know the diabetic patients, these are the things are very common and we see many such patients in our OPDs or in the also and many of you are afraid or we are afraid that whether we could able to manage such cases or no, we refer or we Wash up our hands, it's better not to take a risk. But sometimes we could able to make a record and keep an observation of the diabetes as well as health of the affected part. I hope we can give a better results. So you can be able to see the changes at the soul, it is filling up. Granulation tissues are developing, so interestingly, we are able to make a changes. Can you play this? Hello? Satish? You can see in the dressing room we could be able to when we are doing the dressings daily when you saw what is the 
latest part which is holding that to see see so everything has been separated only we are taking out just for the same sake without anesthesia without anything even patient was also watching why do that thing see so natural amputation that credit could goes to homeopathy where such many cases many may have treated and there is a wide scope for such healing process and even after that two three years also you are in touch there was no ulcer there was no injury or any other aspect and he is keeping is good health with one tablet whatever he is taking allopathic tablet i have allowed him to continue i have not disturbed that is a he is an anapur as well we not able to make a follow up by diabetic and other things but we have saved his success thank you hello we have a lot many questions on this please ah i know this potency as well as repetition and uh, dressing close somebody raised the potency i have started with 200 i have managed with 200 moderate potency only and it was given it hello sikel ko hai shod sikel ko sikel ko na no many considered as a specific medicine for a diabetic gangrene or diabetic ulcers or diabetic non healing wounds it is not prescribed on a specific medicine or as a specific medicine patient is taken here the pre by code a sikel ko was a indicated medicine for the patient and this has taken almost some 35 to 40 days time to get rid of this problem i don't say that within a week the miracle has happened and after giving that see immediately it has separated and it came out not like that it has taken its own time and it's complete healing of the ulcer of the soul as well as the toe which is healed by this gangrene and this medicine and only the sickle cure is able to manage the dressing has been done with the calendula mother pictures It's very interesting. So I'd like to add to many cases, sir. I hope, sir, I'm finishing with one case. Thank you, thank you very much. Give me an opportunity to present our child, my ideas and views. Like that, there are so many cases, sir. But still, I'm very happy with that session where Dr. Bailey was here in the room, and that's really asking for too much. But in any case, Dr. Han, it was a good work done by your team. and i really admire and i want you to continue because a few years back an article in that said jo paradise the future of homeopathy in the world so i would request you and dr rajendra and people like them scientists to please prove the efficacy not only by clinical trials but also by scientific methods Thank you very much, Doctor. Doctor Patel, what do you say about him? I mean, the most lovable creature I have met is Doctor Patel, and I'm calling you creature. Does not mean that it was a bad sense. It is just that everything that you touch turns to gold. Thank you very much for being with us, Doctor Hegel, sir. I always thought that it was Dr. Shetty only who was doing a work on diabetic foot, but today I came to know that Dr. Hegre is also doing it. Dr. Hegre, Sikel Kaur Arsenic L are the two medicines for gangrene which we all have been using, but most of us lose patience when treating gangrene. All somehow. here i would like to add for the students to know that 
we have to know our basic restraints as to where we should stop treating the patient. If we keep on doing it, you know, we are very enthusiastic. We want everything to be cured and that is what normally is shown in most of the conferences. But my request to organizers here and everywhere is that can we have a organize, can, can we have a conference which shows only failures? Whatever he said, I agree with him. But there are many, when we present successful cases, there are equal number, maybe much more than the failure cases. So I agree with you. Meeting every year and where we used to discuss only failures. And I am so thankful to Dr. D.P. Rastogi, late Dr. R.P. Patel sir. Everyone was discussing only that and they used to give us guidance as to how to go about this particular Treatment. Thirdly, the students who are still studying and when they come out of uh, their courses, when they start practice, they are so confused. I have seen it everywhere. Not, not one part of India has a complete teaching program. But most of the researches which are done are clinical researches. But can, can we do a particular research on, like, how long does it, does Belladonna 200 take to act? Does it take five minutes? Does it take five hours? Or it takes five days? How, how, most of us who come out of the colleges don't know how much to wait after we have prescribed the medicine. Who's going to teach us that? I request the stalwarts, everyone around, to please look into this matter and find out efficacy as related to time required. Similarly, what diseases require more time, what diseases require lesser time, when are we going to learn it? Till today, I still don't have a knowledge of more than 100 diseases, which I can say, okay, you can be cured in this length of time. Thirdly, most of the time we teach our students to stop taking some essentially required allopathic medicines. We are jeopardizing the life of the patients. We don't have any life to we have to understand as to what and when it is to be continued. You cannot stop insulin, you cannot stop BP medicines, you cannot stop thyroid medicines, unless you have done, you have gotten it tested multiple times under your treatment. And then start withdrawing the allopathic medicines gradually. So this point has been taken care of and tomorrow the keynote speaker will speak on this issue, sir. Thank you so much. I would love to. Yes, Dr. B.M. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to. And last of all, one last word. I thank Dr. Pankaj Srivasa, who was with me, who has been with me for 20 years. And I thank him not for what he is doing only, but I thank him for listening to the advice given by me. Thank you very much. And thank you, sir. Thank you, Arora, sir, for your valuable suggestions, comments, and good summarization. Now I call upon Mr. Suranjan Sears to come on the dais to give 
a token of love and appreciation to all our speakers. This is Suranjan CS. Dr. Robert Han. Dr. Robert Han. Dr. B. D. Patel, sir. Most energetic personality of K2 NGA. Dr. Pankar Shivasava, sir. Dr. Shripal Hegre, sir. Thank you. 